Welcome to Jumpstart IT Academy YouTube channel. I'm your host and founder of Jumpstart IT Academy, Chris Johnson. Today's video is the 15 best entry-level IT certifications to launch your tech career. Before we get started, let me tell you a little bit about Jumpstart IT Academy. We offer courses, books, and coaching. One of the primary courses that we offer is, a, is, a, is an all-encompassing program, and it's an online digital mentoring program called FastTrack.IT. This is where I show you how to get started in tech, how the tech industry works, different, for, different career fields you can go into, entry-level careers that you can check out. I also go over certifications. I go over uh, degree programs that you can consider. I go over non-technical and technical routes and career paths that you can consider in the tech industry. I uh, essentially help shorten your learning curve and help you excel faster and uh, basically, the goal is to equip you or empower you so that you have the ability to carve out your own tech career. So let's get into this article right here. So certifications give your resume more credibility and can make you more marketable to recruiters and hiring managers. That's very important because A, you want to gain credibility in the tech industry. That's one of the foundational uh, aspects of building a tech career is to is to gain instant or if you can't get it instantly um, certifications is a way to get yourself instantly in the door at least in front of hiring managers or at least in front of recruiters and you want to respect those recruiters and the hiring managers because the recruiters essentially are as i said the gatekeepers and they have relationships with corporations and with these relationships they know what jobs are in demand they know what skills that these employers are looking for and so it'll give you an understanding of the market when you work with them uh, typically when i'm working with recruiters i ask them how's the how's the market doing and they can tell me exactly uh the the hiring patterns that are taking place and the skill sets that are that are being uh, looked at and the hiring manager obviously they're already in-house they are the uh internal uh, talent uh acquisition managers so they're looking for talent so those are the hiring managers that work directly for the company. So the recruiters and the hiring manager, the gatekeepers, be nice to them. And continuing, and at the entry level, they're, they're a great way, meaning certifications are a great, great way to stand out from other candidates and even boost your pay. I can remember in my own experience, there was a candidate that didn't have any certifications and I had certifications. And what that does is that positions you to distinguish yourself from the crowd. It gives you more opportunity and it positions you also so that people can look at you and, and, and see that you've already proven the knowledge that you claim to know. As you grow in your career, you'll want to consider more advanced certifications to continue your professional development. By then, you'll know what specialties to focus on and what skills you need for your desired career path. But... At the entry level, it's better to stick with the more generalized certifications that will help you get your foot in the door. That is very important. You don't want to put down a whole bunch of money and invest it in yourself and you don't even know what it is that you're being involved with in the tech industry because there's, there's a lot of technologies you can learn. There's just as many career paths that you can take and you don't want to just put down a whole bunch of money on one particular technology or one career path because you may want to shift, the market may shift, or your employer that you're working with may shift. And so you want to be flexible in the beginning so that you already, so you don't invest too much into where you're going. Just get your, get your foot in the door, you know, as they would say, get your feet wet, start getting acclimated and understanding and adapting to the environment, and then start building up those skills and then start getting higher level certifications. So here are the 15 IT certifications to launch your, your tech career, whether you have recently graduated or have decided to make a career change. 15 entry-level IT certs to jumpstart your tech career. Apple Certified Support Professional ACSP, AWS Certified Cloud Practitioner, Certified Scrum Master, CSM, Cisco Certified Network Associate, Cisco Certified Technician, CCT, CompTIA A+, Continuing, CompTIA IT Fundamentals Plus, ITF Plus, and you don't see it, but it's CompTIA Network Plus behind that uh, CIO image there. CompTIA Security Plus, 
ITIL4 Foundation, Linux, Essential Professional Development Certification, Microsoft 365 Fundamentals, Microsoft Technology Associate MTA, PMI Associate in Project Management, CA, CAPM, or Certified Associate in Project Management, System Security Certified Practitioner. Let's get started with the Apple Certified Support Professional ACSP. The Apple Certified Support Professional ACSP certification validates your abilities as a help desk professional, technical coordinator, or technical support professional for Mac users. So basically, a lot of people start off in the help desk. I know for myself, I started uh, building PCs, tearing PCs down, assisting people with uh, basic, uh, basic components that were uh, not working in their PC. And I also assisted people over the phone so I can guide them through certain basic software like email and, and Microsoft Word or, or, or maybe they were having problems with their computer starting up. And then I would actually physically go visit their work site and then I would take a look at the PC based on the error code. Uh, so just keep that in mind. It's a, it, it sounds like a good entry point. The uh, ACSP, but we'll continue. The certification demonstrates that you have a strong understanding of Mac OS core functionality and that you can configure key services, perform basic troubleshooting, and support multiple Mac users. If you're looking at entry level IT support jobs, it's a it's a solid certification that will show employers you have the capabilities to manage Apple hardware and software. The exam fee is two hundred fifty dollars. I'm going to warn you, the exam fee. Go check that out for yourself because depending on when you're watching this video and and also the exam fees constantly change. So you may watch this video and the exam change. The exam fee may have changed. So uh, I wouldn't hold this article to it. Don't hold me to it because a, a certifications are constantly changing and you just want to be aware of that. Now, here's some input on Apple from my own experience. When working with Apple from my from my experience. Apple was used heavily in the media and entertainment industry, so uh, that's just a tidbit. So if you are looking to get into the tech industry using the Apple Certified Support Professional Certification, just keep that in mind. Uh, just go ahead and first start off looking at those industries, uh, the media and entertainment, and, and check those out and see if they have demand for uh, the Apple Certified Support Professional Certification so you can get an entry point in the tech and get your career started. Continuing. AWS Certified Cloud Practitioner. The AWS Certified Cloud Practitioner exam offered by Amazon is an entry-level cloud certification that covers the fundamentals of IT services and how they are used in the AWS cloud platform. The exam covers topics such as coding, design, designing cloud architecture, cloud security, troubleshooting, implementation, migration, load and performance testing, and business applications. While this is an entry-level certification, it's recommended to have six months of exposure to the AWS cloud and knowledge of core AWS services, use cases, billing, pricing models, security concepts, and how cloud impacts the business. Now, I haven't checked out AWS in a while in terms of for myself seeking a certification, but when I did, uh, from my understanding, they still allow you to go to AWS and to turn up certain uh, devices uh, for free as long as you use just like a minimum of their services. So go ahead and check that out. Go to AWS and check that out. Uh, also, I was coaching someone yesterday and on this coaching call, uh, this person wanted to study Python and I had encouraged him to take Python and put it together with AWS so that you can be specialized in cloud and you can be specialized in, in Python. And so I encouraged him to go get that AWS uh, certified cloud practitioner. And then from there, I believe he can become an AWS certified developer. And then from there, an AWS certified DevOps um, professional. And then I encouraged him, if he's going to go to data analytics, to uh, specialize in the AWS data analytics certification. So that was a career path that I had recommended for that particular coaching call. So uh, if you want to get into AWS or you're into uh, programming, uh, consider adding some cloud to that particular skill set. Let's keep it pushing. Let's go. So the exam fee for the AWS certification is $100. Next, Certified Scrum Master CSM. Certified Scrum Master CSM is an entry-level certification to validate your skills and abilities using Scrum, a popular agile development framework 
It's a valuable certification for anyone interested in becoming a Scrum Master, but it's also useful for anyone on the path to becoming a software engineer, business analyst, or project manager. The exam covers topics such as Scrum and Agile, Scrum Theory, Scrum Values, Scrum Teams, and Scrum Master Role, Scrum Events, and Scrum Artifacts. For more information, see CSM Certification, What You Need to Know. These links that you see here, I'm going to put this particular article in the description. So if you want to go further and check out some of this stuff in the hyperlinks, go ahead and do that. The exam fee is from $400 to $1,000, depending on the location and whether you choose an online or, or in-person or hybrid course. Now, let me give you a little insight on my experience with, with Scrum Master or with Scrum. It was working for an enterprise level Fortune, whatever, 100 company. And basically, when they use Scrum, uh, there was non-technical people that were certified in Scrum and that were equipped to uh, basically manage the projects. The, the Scrum projects are done in what's called sprints. They pretty much do projects in small increments. And then they, uh, they, and they do certain parts in parallel uh, so that uh, the project can get done quickly and they can validate the, um, the, the section that they're working on. So they don't do a, like traditional project management, you do a whole bunch of work. And then after you do all that work, then you start validating at the end. But with Scrum Master, what it does is it's to me, it has more quality control. So Scrum Master is good for someone who's a software engineer, business analyst or project manager. My perspective was the project management perspective, also software engineering, because we were working on a, a web application at the time. And I was in the room with a whole bunch of software engineers. Continuing Cisco Certified Network Associate CCNA in the past. Cisco offered several individual certifications under the Certified Network Associate CCNA Certification Scheme, but it has recently consolidated all CCNA certifications into one single CCNA certification. The new CCNA certification validates your skills and knowledge with network fundamentals, network access, IP connectivity, IP services, security fundamentals and automation, and programmability. The CCNA is designed to cover a broad range of fundamentals based on the latest technologies, software development skills, and job roles. It's an entry-level certification designed to get you up to speed on the latest IT fundamentals to launch your tech career. It's best suited for those interested in roles such as entry-level network engineer. We would call that like a junior engineer or perhaps even a network administrator. Help desk technician, network administrator, there you go, or network support technician. The exam fee is $300. Now, the CCNA, I pretty much made my entire career off of the Microsoft Certified System Engineer and the CCNA and the CCMP. Those are the three primary certifications that launched me into the high six figures. So I think a CCNA is a good start. And if you're into networking, I think it's a good place to, to stay. If you're a project manager and you're working on a lot of network projects, I would suggest that you go ahead and get the CCNA too if you're going to be if you're going to make networking or pro managing network projects your niche. So if you get the Scrum Master and you, you get into project management, you know you're going to manage a lot of networking projects. Go ahead and consider adding a CCNA. Other than that, if you don't want to specialize in it, then I suggest that you just get a general understanding of networking so you can work with networking professionals. The next one is Cisco Certified Technician. The Cisco Certified Technician CCT certification verifies your ability to diagnose, restore, repair, and replace critical Cisco networking and system structures, or excuse me, devices at customer sites. There are two CCT paths to choose from, data center or routing and switching. Now, if you're gonna work in a data center, I'm just gonna give you an insight here. Data centers are 24 seven. If you, if you have a, a, a lifestyle or you have uh, children or responsibilities that, that you, you can't be in a 24 seven environment because you'll be able to work. You'd have to work multiple shifts. The uh, the morning shift, the swing shift and then the graveyard shift. So those are the di three different shifts that I'm aware of. And what I did was I worked four days on and had four days on and had four days off. Sometimes you can work three days on and have three days off. It depends on what the, the needs are at the data center. But that's my experience with being in, in the data center. So keep that in mind if you're interested in uh, the data center path. The CCT data center certification covers support and maintenance of Cisco Unified Computing Systems and Server. It's targeted at field support engineers working with Cisco data center system devices and software. You'll need to take the course supporting Cisco data center system devices, DC Tech. 
version 2.0 before you can pass the exam. The course covers data center networking fundamentals, field servicing, and equipment replacement, and how to identify Cisco Unified Computing System components or UCS component models. Let's continue. Accessories, cabling, and interfaces. The, the next path is the CCT routing and switching certification. It covers on-site support and maintenance of Cisco routers, switches, and operating environments. It's designed for on-site technical support and other support staff who work with Cisco data center solutions. Before you can take the exam, you'll need to take the course supporting Cisco routing and switching network devices, RS Tech. The online self-paced course covers networking fundamentals, Cisco, Cisco router and switch models, Cisco iOS software operating models, and Cisco command line interface, CLI. The exam is $125 per exam. CompTIA A plus is the next one. CompTIA A plus. I used to teach the, the CompTIA in, a, in, in the college, so I helped a lot of people launch their tech careers with the CompTIA A plus certification or getting the, gain, them gaining the skills through me so they can go take the exam and get entry point into the tech industry. So the CompTIA A plus certification is targeted at support specialists, field service technicians, desktop support analysts, and help desk support. If you're interested in landing a job in a related field, it's a solid entry level certification that is well regarded in the industry. The cert certifies your ability to troubleshoot and solve problems with networking, operating systems, mobile devices, and security and consists of two exams. One that covers mobile devices, networking technology, hardware, virtualization, and cloud computing, and network troubleshooting and a second exam that covers installing and configuring operating systems, expanding security, and troubleshooting software and operational procedures. The exam cost is $232 for the CompTIA A+. Let's move forward. The CompTIA IT Fundamentals plus ITF plus. The CompTIA IT Fundamentals plus ITF plus certification is designed for those interested in starting a career in IT who want to change their career paths. The exam is intended to validate your foundational knowledge in IT to give you a better idea of what it like what it's like to work in IT. Jumpstart IT Academy, we offer uh, coaching. So if you're an existing professional and you have no idea how the tech industry works and you need help transitioning, that's what we can do for you. So go ahead and go to jumpstartitacademy.com and, and go check out our uh, two methods of, of coaching. We have a 30 minute or in an hour session. It covers the CompTIA, a, the CompTIA IT Fundamentals Plus, it covers essential IT skills and knowledge such as the functions and features of common operating systems, establishing network connectivity, security best practices, and how to identify common software applications. The certification exam covers networks, infrastructure, IT concepts and terminology, applications and software, security, database fundamentals, and software development. It's also a good starting point if you want to continue down the CompTIA A or the CompTIA certification path, but it's not a requirement for the other certifications. And the exam fee for the CompTIA uh, infrastructure or I CompTIA IT fundamentals is $126. Next is the CompTIA Network Plus. The CompTIA Network Plus is an entry-level certification that covers networking concepts, troubleshooting, operations, tools, and security, as well as IT infrastructure. The certification is designed for junior network administrators, network field technicians, junior system engineers, IS consultants, and network field engineers. It's recommended to have your CompTIA A Plus certification and at least 9 to 12 months of networking experience before taking the exam, but it's not required. Now, I'm going to give you an insight on, in terms of why it's not required. It's, it, I, I assume it's not required because of this, based on my own experience. With the CompTIA Network Plus, if you, got the, if you have the A+, plus, you're already going to be exposed to networking. You're going to be exposed to um, most likely like cloud. You'll have a general understanding of these different topics. And you want to have 9 to 12 months, what they're saying is, networking experience before taking an exam. But it's not required because... This, this will give you the ability to have that hands-on training. So your hands-on training will match your, the concepts that you learn, and it becomes more real to you so that when you take the exam, uh, you'd be able to uh, pass that exam. 
Uh, what I'd recommend, since they say it's not required, if you're taking the CompTIA Network Plus, uh, look at how you can um, find lab organizations that have uh, uh, networking labs set up that you can um, take some of their labs or look about look at how you can set up a lab for yourself at your house. Uh, that's how I train. I just set up a lab at my house and I did my configurations at my house and then I would go um, take the certification, uh, read the books. I would take the certification test and then when I pass the test, I basically started looking for uh, opportunities in tech and that's pretty much how it works in tech. That's why I love tech. The exam verifies your knowledge with configuring, managing and maintaining network devices, implementing and designing functional networks, network troubleshooting and sec network security. If you know you want to work closely with IT networks, it's a well recognized and worthwhile certification that will set you apart from other entry level candidates. The exam fee for the CompTIA Network Plus is $338. Let's go next to the CompTIA Security Plus. Security is a crucial IT skill for any technology role. I agree with this part right here because security encompasses just about every career field. No matter what you're doing in IT, you need to be aware of security. Even if you're a project manager, because in security there's there's physical security. So if you're a project manager and you leave your laptop open, then you leave it exposed, especially if a vendor comes in and a vendor is there to sabotage the, um, the environment that you're in, then that vendor could be sent by a competitor to destroy the network or to, to gain some sort of um, confidential information. So uh, security is really important for anyone involved with technology. Continuing, so it's a good idea to earn your CompTIA Security Plus certification at the entry level. It's suited for network system and security administrators, security specialists, junior IT auditors, security consultants, and security engineers. A new exam launched in November 2020 that is compliant with the ISO 17024 standards and approved by the U.S. Department of Defense to meet specific security requirements. The 90-minute exam covers threats, attacks and vulnerabilities, risk management, architecture and design, technology and tools, cryptography and PKI, and identity and access management. Earning your Security Plus certification will show employers you have the skills to install and configure systems to keep applications, networks, and devices secure in accordance with compliance laws. Now, keeping it, keeping, keeping an environment uh, in align with compliance laws is important. I used to work at a bank and our compliance auditor was FDIC. FDIC pretty much would come in and I worked on the network and they would come in and they would audit the network and tell us things that needed to be um, needed to be fixed so that we can be in compliance. And also compliance is not just um, good for making sure that the, the network is, is, is secure and the network meets the compliance auditors. Um, requirement, but being in compliance also uh, causes a designer, the person like in, in terms of networking, to design the network based on the compliance, uh, basically the compliance criteria. So when an auditor comes the next time, if the design is built like the network design is built on, on the, the uh, compliance laws, then the network will be able to pass the, the auditing with, uh, with few uh, what we call dings, with, you know, without uh, messing up or breaking some of the compliance uh, body's laws. Moving forward, the exam fee is $349. ITIL 4 Foundation. The ITIL 4 framework from Exelos is a popular management methodology designed to improve team efficiency and organizational processes. The ITIL 4 Foundation certification covers the basics of IT service management and the best practices for creating, delivering, and improving tech-enabled products and services. If you plan to work in an IT service management role, it's a great certification to help you get started on that path. The exam covers the guiding principles of IT4, ITIL4, the four dimensions of service management and key concepts such as Lean, Agile, and DevOps. Exam fee varies depending on the vendor. Uh, typical people I've seen get the ITIL4 are um, people getting entry level and for people who are already in the industry going to a specific job where they use the IT service management model. So they want their candidates to already have that as a foundation. So when they go in, they'll be able to fit in. Next, Linux Essentials Professional Development Certification. 
The Linux Essentials Professional Development Certification, PDC, is designed to demonstrate your understanding of Linux, a popular open source operating system used in several industries. I'm going to pause right there just to give you an understanding of closed and open systems. Uh, Linux is an open system, meaning that it's not closed. I know that sounds <laughs> basic, but uh, what I'm saying is uh, because Linux was an open operating system, it really opened the doors for a lot of innovators to create products that were very, very um, industry changing. And also, now when you look at closed systems, think of Microsoft operating system and think of the Mac operating systems. Those are closed systems. They don't allow anyone to modify the uh, the kernel or the core of their uh, operating system, whereas Linux allows uh, programmers to actually uh, modify the code and actually create whatever products that they want, whether it's operating systems or whether it's software. The exam covers the basic concepts of Linux hardware, software, processes, and programs as well as system security, file permissions, and public and private directories. It also covers topics such as open source applications, how to work with the command line, creating and resorting or resorting, compressed backup and archives, and creating and running simple scripts. It's best suited to those on track to become an IT developer, administrator, or engineer. I know with network engineering, uh, network engineering is moving more towards software-defined networking. Um, basically, uh, the names may have changed, but basically using using programming and scripting uh, to to basically work with networking devices. And so I would I would uh, assume that some of these network devices may be running uh, a Linux operating system, and if it runs a Linux operating system, then the engineer would need to know that. Or the engineer would need to know the Linux system, the Linux system, so it can modify uh, Linux uh, Linux devices. The exam fee is one hundred and twenty dollars. Microsoft three hundred and sixty fundamentals. The Microsoft three hundred and sixty five or three hundred and sixty five fundamental certification covers all the basics and fundamentals of the Microsoft three hundred and sixty five suite of products and services. The certification proves that you understand the options available in Microsoft three hundred and sixty five and the benefits of adopting cloud services, the software as a service, SaaS, cloud model, and implementing the, th the Microsoft 365 cloud service. Microsoft updated the certification on October 25th, 2021 to include new details about the licensing options for Azure Active Directory Premium P1 and Premium P P2. The exam will ask you to describe and explain cloud concepts, core Microsoft 365 services and concepts, security compliance, privacy, and trust in Microsoft 365. You'll also be tested on your knowledge of the Microsoft 365 products, services, and pricing structures. The exam fee is $99. Bringing up the term certifications. Uh, I want you to understand certifications expire. Some people think, well, I get a certification. I'm in the, I'm in the tech industry. Now I've made it. You may have made it in the tech industry. But that doesn't mean you're going to be able to stay. If you don't Keep your certifications up to date. Certifications expire like a year or some expire three years. Check your certification to find out when it expires. So while you have the certification and you're you're still you're working on a job, you can make a plan to have a curriculum so that you can make sure your skills stay up to date. If your skills don't stay up to date and your employer requires that you have a certification, you may risk being laid off. So keep that in mind. Microsoft Technology Associate MTA. The Microsoft Technology Associate MTA certification scheme includes several entry-level beginner certifications that cover the fundamentals of IT topics, including Mobility, JavaScript, Python, HTML, and HTML5, CSS, Networking, Operating Systems, Windows Server Administration, Security, Databases, and Development. The MTA certifications are designed for entry-level workers just starting out in IT or for those looking to change IT careers. The exam is meant to help you establish your, your career track in IT, letting you decide what areas you want to focus on. MTA certs are a great place to start for anyone interested in starting a career in desktop infrastructure, server infrastructure, or private cloud computing. The exam fee varies by location. PMI Associate in Project PMI Certified Associate in Project Management CAPM. 
The Certified Associate in, Associate in Project Management, CAPM, certification is widely recognized entry-level certification for project management offered through the Project Management Institute, PMI. You don't necessarily have to be a project manager to get your CAPM. Plenty of IT jobs require project management skills to oversee technical projects. And that's what I want to emphasize. Project management is a skill like security. You, you, you want to add that to your repertoire because as you go on in your career, you see, you may start off working in operations. That's the day-to-day -day activities of your technical or technology environment. But there's also projects, and that is the implementation environment. That's the environment where projects have a start and an ending. Operation is always ongoing. Okay, I hope that makes sense because the, the, the operations of your technological environment is tied to your business operations and projects enhance or improve the business operations by improving the technological uh, operations. So just just keep that in mind. Get some project management skills, because as you grow in your career, you may need to take on uh, projects and work on projects as a subject matter expert. You'll need a secondary degree and at least 23 hours of project management education completed before you can take the exam. But you can accomplish that through PMI's Project Management Basics course. The course is designed by PMI to prepare you for the CAPM certification exam. It covers project management basics and skills you'll need for an IT project management job. For, for more information, go ahead and see the CAPM certification, cost salary training, and more. That article, like I said, this particular article will be in the description if you're interested in uh, researching and clicking on that hyperlink. Exam fee is $225 for members, $300 for non-members. Course fee is $350 for members and $400 for non-members. Systems Security Certified Practitioner. The Systems Security Certified Practitioner, SSCP, certification certifies your skills in implementing, monitoring, and administering IT infrastructure in alignment with the industry's best practices as established by the ISC2. The certification is best suited for network security engineers, system administrators, security analysts, systems engineers, security consultants, security administrators, systems and networks analysts, and database administrators. To qualify, you need at least one year of work experience in one or more of the seven domains, which includes access controls, security operations and administration, risk identification and monitoring, incident response and recovery, cryptography, network and communication security, and systems and application security. If you don't have the required experience, you can take the exam to become an associate of ISC2. If you pass, you will have two years to complete the one year of required experience. You may also qualify to take the exam if you have a related degree from an accredited college or university or the equivalent in computer science, computer engineering, computer systems engineering, management information systems, or information technology. It's a great place to start if you want to add cybersecurity skills to your expertise. The exam fee is $249. Now, they mention that you can get the certification, but you have, to, you, you have two years to get the one-year experience to qualify, or you can take the certification test, but you'd have two years to get the one-year experience to, to be able to receive the, the certification. That's a, that's a good deal. Because in this, in this situation, you may have an employer that wants you to get the certification, to get the job. Well, a hiring manager will still interview you because you've already taken the initiative, initiative and shown ambition to, be, to have already taken the exam. Therefore, when the hiring manager hires you, that means that they want you to stay, so they want you to work. You're going to get that one year of experience there, and then you'll eventually be able to get that one year experience and get your certification. So look at those opportunities when you're reviewing different types of certifications. So today we looked at the 15 best entry level IT certifications to launch your career. Remember, IT certifications can verify your knowledge and various skill sets, boost your, boost your pay and set you apart from other entry level candidates. And we looked at these 15 level uh, entry level certifications. Uh, this is Jumpstart IT Academy. Get skilled in IT over a college degree. Uh, we will see you in the next video. We have a free course on jumpstartitacademy.com. It's called the top 10 myths of the, the IT industry. 
Go ahead and check that out for yourself. If you need coaching, go ahead and check that out at jumpstartitacademy.com as well. And we will see you in the next video.